Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 33 of the Beginner to Masters free run. Coming into today, rated 1445 on a win streak of 106 games. So I'll try and keep it going. Let's just hop into the first game. Okay, first opponent playing Jody Leaps. And I'll start with the usual 1e4. And we have a Carol Khan. So I'm going to go for the two knights attack. Played this uh, a few times in recent episodes. And yeah, there's a lot of moves I thought could have played there, but uh, knight of six is definitely a playable move. And it's not the most common move. Like usually black will play bishop g4 or take. But with knight of six, this does give me the chance to expand and attack the knight. And the knight just retreats. Okay, so that's probably a good sign. Um, as far as I know, the main move is knight e4, and there is some theory there. But with knight g8, I think I'm happy to play d4, grab some space. Now we see bishop to g4. So I do have some early lead in development, a bit happier of a, a center. I'm kind of deciding here between h3, or just leaving the bishop here and developing but I think h3 kind of makes sense just to question the bishop. If takes, I'm happy to take back with the queen. So we'll see what black wants to do here. Bishop h5. Now, we definitely have some options here. I mean, g4 is a consideration just to keep expanding, kick the bishop back. Uh, there's another move that comes to mind sure if I want to play it, but that move is e6. With the idea that, I mean, if it's black to move, black is likely wanting to play e6 and develop and maybe play c5. And if I play pawn e6 myself, it would be a pawn sacrifice, but if takes, then this pawn is blocked on e7. Bishop would then have a harder time getting out. So it's an interesting gambit idea. Um, kind of hard to calculate though, because here takes, and then, I mean, what's my follow up? Maybe then g4. Maybe I could play g4 and then e6. Choices, choices. Now, I do feel like white should play in a more aggressive manner here, simply because I have more space and more development. Uh, maybe it makes sense to like first play g4 and then e6 to sack the pawn. A nice thing also about e6 is I clear the e5 square for the knight. So I'm going to go for it. I'll start with g4. And generally, you do have to be careful expanding the kingside pawns. But uh, I haven't castled yet, so maybe I'll eventually castle queenside. And yeah, I'm going to play e6 here. And this is more of a positional pawn sacrifice. Like usually when you sacrifice pawns or pieces, it's generally for tactical reasons. But I mean, the positional benefits for white is um, in black has a hard time developing. And I have now the half open e file. These pawns are really ugly. I can start with knight e5, maybe right away. Yeah, let's go for it. Now I have ideas of taking and then bishop to d3. So we'll see what black wants to do in response. Black plays knight d7, so trying to challenge this knight. And now if I take and then take and then bishop d3, how does black actually defend the g6 pawn? Let's go for it. I mean, I did move my knight a bunch of times to trade it off, but I think it's justified. Black now has two sets of double pawns. And there's not too many moves to avoid getting mated here. I mean, there's king f7. At king f7, I have queen f3. One of the knights would have to block, and then I have pawn g5 to win the knight. Rook h6, it's an attempt, but then I can just take. So I think the aggression is paying off here. 
Another option for Bach is maybe to move the queen and then create some room for the king to escape. But if I can take on g6 and take away Bach's casting rights, I won't even be down a pawn. I'll have a great position. Bach uh, does move the queen. So I think I can just go ahead and take and then decide what to do. And definitely still takes work. It's equal material now. And the center is closed, so it's uh, not like I'm going to be getting to the king anytime soon. Although maybe there's an idea of queen f3. And then I, I could potentially checkmate the king in three more moves. The queen f3 it has an other benefit of supporting bishop f4, maybe getting ready to queenside castle. So I'm calculating this, and then in black maybe has e5 there. And then I don't want to take, because knight takes and attacks and attacks, also covers f7. Oh, wait a minute. No, then I win the bishop. So queen f3, e5, takes. There is queen takes. Maybe it gets a bit murky. So there's also queen f3, e5, queen f7, threatening checkmate. And then whatever knight moves to f6, let's say knight gf6, I have pawn g5. And for a moment, it looks like my queen is getting stuck, but if the knight moves, I'll be mating. Yeah, let's go for queen f3. I'm trying to keep my foot on the gas pedal. And there's definitely some complicated and spicy lines that can happen from here. But it's nice having just more development. I think there's a bit more harmony with white's pieces. And black is still very underdeveloped. Especially this bishop, it's going to have a very hard time getting out soon. With these pawns not moving soon. So e5, I'll still have to choose between taking or queen f7. But I think queen f7 is just more direct. Threatening the mate. Okay, so knight h6 does cover f7. But it also allows takes. And then whatever takes back, I can still maybe go in. I guess there's a calculation takes, takes, queen f7, knight f6. Oh, but then I take on e6. I should also note here I have the move pawn g5, which maybe would provoke this or this. And f5, I win the pawn. So I think I just have to choose what to do. Um, I like the, uh, taking the knight, though. I think this is the most forcing. And I've taken a lot of time so far, so it makes sense to try and simplify. Yeah, now I think I'll be winning a pawn. Threatening mate, threatening the pawn. I think the only two moves are knight f6 and king c8. King c8 would allow for queen e8, queen d8. So the king runs, and I can probably just take the pawn. King does run. I don't think this really leads to much. I mean, it could lead to the queen trade, but I mean, usually when your opponent's king is less safe than your king, you want to leave queens on the board. White definitely has more attacking potential here. Now, the one good thing for black is a bishop has a legal move. Um, which it didn't a few moves ago. But if black plays this, leaves e7 undefended, maybe it's the best try. Like here, if I take this pawn, I lose this pawn. So I think if black plays this, I'm maybe more likely to castle queenside. Just get the king safer, connect the rooks. Oh, but queen f4. Okay, so this prevents me from castling. After such a move, I do have to ask, like, what is the threat? Probably the main threat is taking the pawn on d4. 
But I'm wondering if I can just like attack the knight with the bishop, like bishop e8 or bishop f5. Bishop e8 is fancy, but I think bishop f5 is just a bit more preferred. And it looks like black is going to have to move back the queen to defend the knight. Maybe queen d6 is the best try for black, just, uh, yeah, trying to offer the queen trade. Now, I, mean, I don't want to trade queens, but yeah, maybe I should. After takes, takes, the bishop will still be strong. I could consider this move. And king c7. Yeah, I'm going to allow the queen trade. I'm up a pawn, and if takes, takes, I mean, black is still underdeveloped as, as we approach the endgame. I'll probably look to expand my kingside pawn majority. Okay, so we do trade queens. Imagine black is going to play king c7 soon. And I do want to give kudos to my opponent for surviving what looked to be a really bad, ugly position. It is playable for black now. Um, put the rook on e1. It's still a nice half open file. This e7 pawn could definitely be a potential target. Yeah, black attacks f4, so we'll play pawn f5. I mean, the nice thing about this is it cements the bishop. It ensures uh, the rook can't really do anything on that file. Um, but the bad thing about having the pawns on the light squares is it doesn't combine great with the light squared bishop. I'm not really controlling the dark squares. But um, I mean, the position is still really nice. I'll go for rookie two. Maybe prepare the double up. I do have to watch my time. I mean, it took a lot of time in the opening and middle game. I think it paid off to get a nice position, but definitely have to ramp up the tempo. I'm trying to imagine the plan here for white. If I play this, the bishop doesn't really have any moves. So maybe I'll go for this, like pawn b4. And one idea might be to play a4, eventually b5 to weaken black structure. Another idea might be to maneuver to c5 with a knight. Although that might be prevented with uh, pawn b6. Now if I move the knight, I allow knight e4, which maybe I don't want to allow. So we're both getting lower on time. I mean, it's not easy for Black to find productive play here. Um, okay, maybe now, I mean, now if I play this, there's knight e4 and then knight c5. Yeah, let's go for that. But on c3, the knight really wasn't doing much. And dark squares do look pretty juicy for the knight. And b6 is no longer... Maybe it is playable. Or rook b8. Black doesn't go for it, though. Now I'm just realizing if I play knight c5, there's knight c3 forking the rooks. So let's not get forked. I think I'll start with rook d3. Just ensuring... Yeah, the knight can't do much damage. And now I'll play this. And this attacks a knight. If black takes, I probably take back with a b-pawn. And that opens a b-file, which maybe allows for the eventual doubling up and then targeting the soon-to-be backwards b7-pawn. I'm also hitting b7 right away with this move. So b-file does open. And yeah, let's, uh, let's go for rook b3. 
leaves d4 undefended temporarily, but the bishop is blocked by its own rook. h5 doesn't do much because I have g5. I think the plan now is to play c3, rook, eb2. That goes for h5, so I'll play g5. I think h5 was maybe a, a bit counterproductive for black. This allows me to expand further. I'll play pawn h4, just cementing the structure. Oh, wait a minute, I just hung a pawn though. Oops. Well, maybe it was productive for black. And now this pawn is weak. Knight sack, take and then take. Probably not. I was getting okay. I have an idea. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play pawn c3. I was getting really tricky, but this is my idea to play pawn g7. I'm threatening pawn g7 now. The bishop can't come back to defend. And now I can take. So that's a good transformation. And now let's move the rook to e6. And this rook probably wants to get back towards the center. Actually, yeah, if I play rook b2, there's bishop a3. So I have to be really, really careful. Uh, I do have the idea of eventually getting the rook to g5. That move, g7 probably. And the rook's going to have to move back. And I'll defend. Now it's a question, can I can I make use of this pawn on g7 before the bishop gets to attack it? The black is maybe gonna go for this. Hmm. To really watch my time. Okay, now I, I get the pin on the g file. I have less than 25 seconds. There's no increment. I'm going to win the bishop. Yeah, big kudos to my opponent for really, really fighting. I mean, I could have been in trouble somewhere there. Like maybe if the rook took on g7. But now it looks like I'm going to win the bishop. There's a question, can I win the position with a time situation? Which I think I should be able to. I'll take the rook. Um, I don't care about bishop takes rook, because then I, I simplify. I'll make a queen. I can pre-move. Black trying to push the h-pawn. Let's check. Take with check. Check again. I'm just going to go straight for the kill. Looks like I'm mating next move. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was a close one. Man. 51 moves. My opponent defended really well. It was really resilient. I probably was in trouble at some point, especially after blundering my d4 pawn. Uh, let's definitely take a look. And we'll start with the opening. Um, that's probably the closest I've come to losing in this whole speed run. Uh, yeah, I got really, really low on time. So my opponent went for knight f6, which, uh, I mean, it's a move, but usually when white plays e5, black should play this move, um, offering the trade in knights. And then if takes, takes, this is uh, very fine for black. Knight gets hit. So what I would have done here was uh, kind of a strange move, knight e2. And the idea is I avoid the knight trade and prepare pawn d3. Uh, and there's cases where the knight could be trapped. And then I think the main line from here goes queen b6, threatening mate. I'd have to play pawn d4, and then eventually knight g3, and life goes on. So of course that didn't happen. Opponent retreated the knight. And yeah, let's see what the engine thinks of this idea on e6. I mean, it's 
really not the, the conventional way of playing, but because my opponent lost time moving the knight back and forth and moved the bishop a bunch, I think sometimes it's justified to just be very aggressive and less materialistic, uh, especially with e6 kind of hampering black's, especially kingside development in, in this position. But I clearly didn't follow through in the best fashion. I took on g6, which is fine. I, I won the g-pawn. I think black uh, made a good decision running with the king this way. And then after queen f3, knight h6 takes. I mean, white's still much better here. Take on e6. Yeah, all of this was fine. Oh, one thing I didn't consider, but maybe I should have, was um, instead of leaving my queen here, I could have just traded immediately. After takes, pawns get doubled, then the e-file is entirely open. Um, the engine slightly prefers this, saying 92, maybe in maneuver and then play c3. But I mean, what I did, I think, was still fine. But my opponent just basically consolidated, and then... Oh, wow! So in this position, I missed a tactic. I didn't even realize I had, like, tactical potential here. What I should have realized is that if I can move my bishop, I'll be threatening rook takes e7 with a double attack against black's king and bishop. So the natural move to consider is bishop takes pawn. And if black takes back with the pawn, then I win back material, win two pawns in, in the process. If black takes with a knight, I just take again, and uh, eventually e7 will be lost. So yeah, that was an unfortunate miss. And then I still missed it. Yeah, bishop takes d5, just very oblivious. I was more in a, a positional mindset to kind of slow play and gradually improve. And I no longer had the opportunity. I was still better. Like, white's still in control. After g5, again, I had the move. Bishop takes g5. Yeah, it was just a blind spot. I played this move thinking, oh, maybe black wants to play h4, so I should reinforce my g-pawn. But... Uh, yeah, I did not acknowledge that rook moving backwards actually attacks a d-pawn. Acknowledge that the rook obstructed the, the bishop earlier. So there were a few moves for white uh, to play here. Probably the simplest is c3. Of course, bishop takes d5 as well. But after h4, I lost a pawn. White's still doing well. Um, yeah, actually, I was still in control. After g7... Oh, but g7 gave away my whole advantage. Yeah, perhaps it's it's extending prematurely. And what happened in the game... Okay, so here... We, we both made a couple mistakes here. Um, engine saying bishop f2 is the best move, perhaps to take and then play this. Apparently after bishop to d6... White has only one winning move, is to play pawn f6. With the idea that after takes, of course white doesn't take back because you want to hold on to the g-pawn, but then king c2. And the idea is with f6 and pawn f6, the bishop can't move to e5 to attack the pawn right away. And if f5, then white's in time to save the pawn. Um, yeah, rook g1 or even rook e1 is a nice move. Again, using this potential double attack on e7. So not the most precise play from either of us. So I started with king c2. After bishop e5, rook b1. Um, oh, wow. So in this position, the best move for black and the only move that doesn't lose, I think is really hard to find. Because in the or during the game, I thought rook takes g7 is the best try, but this walks into rook e1, and after bishop f6, then white can take and take and take. 
And if rook takes rook, then white takes back, and yeah, the g-pawn is passed. So it actually doesn't work for black to take the pawn with a bishop or with the rook. Uh, but the best move is to play bishop f6. And engine just says this is equal, because there's not really a great way for white to make progress. Uh, like e7 is now defended, the king's going to come in. Black's probably eventually going to win the pawn. H4 is a constant liability as well. So I think I'm very fortunate that, uh, yeah, my opponent stumbled here, gave me the material, and I had just enough time to win the game. But that was a very long fight. I think a lot of lessons to take away from that game. Uh, it's already a, a long video. I think I'm going to end it there, and we'll have a, a one-game episode. Haven't had one of these in a while, but... Uh, Hope you enjoyed this roller coaster game. If you have any questions, do leave them below. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help the channel. And stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys soon.